Welcome back to the W Basketball Show. Today's recording is just going to be me uh, doing a little recap of the 2023 WNBA Finals, which finished around about an hour ago in Game 4. The Las Vegas Aces defeated the New York Liberty. Um, and I've got my notes here. I've got, a, I've got a little notepad with all my notes from the first few games. And... Cannot say that I expected the Aces to close it out without Chelsea Gray or Kia Stokes. Um, but yeah, this podcast is going to be more of a recap rather than like, you know, classic analysis or anything like that. Um, and I assume I'll get Marco on have, you know, being an Aces fan and also my, my, my closest confidant and expert when it comes to the WNBA for a more in-depth look. But this is more just like a look back at the series. Um, and I'll go through game by game and then give, you know, I'll give you, I'll give a few, a few, uh, notes and thoughts at the end. So this is obviously the series everyone was expecting all season long. Um, a pretty goofy WNBA season when you look at the standings at the end of the season, because out of the 12 teams, only four of them were above 500 and, um, the Aces and the Liberty were well, well, well above 500. Uh, Aces, sorry, at Liberty's winning percentage was 0.800, and Aces was 0.850. Um, so, yeah, I think as soon as the end of the, or not even the end of, during the middle of um, the most recent off-season, it was kind of a an, an inevitable uh, matchup in the WNBA Finals, and then we got it, and this, this matchup is so imbalanced both teams makeups are completely different and today's game four was the only game of the finals that had clutch time uh i didn't get to um look it up for the regular season but it seems as though it might have also been the case for the regular season games and yeah this game was decided by a point 70 to 69 in favor of the aces and yeah, um, but let, let's 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 start from game one. Let's do a recap because <clears throat> you guys haven't heard from me either since uh, my chat with Jade Melbourne, where and then with Marco, where uh, I called Aces to win, Jade called Liberty Liberty to win, Marco also called Aces to win. I'm sure that if you were to ask Marco and I between or before game four, if we thought that uh, the Aces were going to win, I you know, I know what I think. The answer was no. I can. I'm safe to assume that Marco was also thinking no. Um, also, something I could double check with him. But game one, 99 to 82, in favor of the Aces, and it was played in Las Vegas, the Michelob Ultra Arena, of course. Uh, yeah, early on, the Liberty had the scoreboard, but the Aces played their game all night. Um, it was a few, huge first half for Johannes. Uh, she was five of nine from three for the night. I think she hit. Four of those in the first half, um, but she really looked just like played so free, looked so comfortable out there, uh, and in such a high pressure situation for a bench player to come on and yeah approach the game so freely. I think that's such a great sign for not only Johannes but the Liberty more generally. That not only does she feel so free to do that, but that the rest of the team kind of wants her to do that. Um, but yeah, after a f- huge first half, I feel like Sandy Brondello kind of went away from her and messed with her rhythm. Um, yeah, there was a slow beatdown by the Aces on the scoreboard in the third quarter, which laid the foundation to run away with it in the fourth. And straight away, it, it, it really felt like this was the Aces series. I can remember after game one, that was that was definitely the feeling. They got... Um, Stewie out of her rhythm. John Quill Jones played okay in game one, but it was just so the Aces game from start to finish, even with the Liberty having the having the lead early, uh, which made way for game two, which ended up being a 104 to 76 win by the Aces. And this was wire to wire, just like, man, from the tip, um, the Aces just had full control of the game and the scoreboard. And they were up 20 within the first seven minutes of the game. Uh, which, you know, if you can do that in the finals, you you, you kind of set yourself yourself up to to win that game. And on the flip side, if you're 
a team that allows that in a finals game. Even if you are to bring the scoreboard back, you've kind of showed your hand and that you um, you were ready to uh, to allow yourselves to get beat down. Uh, and even yeah, even though the Liberty brought it to within six or two six late in the half, um, it really felt like that was the Liberty's last push for the night, and it was. Uh, the Aces ran away with it after that. Um, yeah, in the third, but then there was no comeback by the Liberty, and they really didn't let the Liberty get back in, find any sort of rhythm, which, you know, is reflected in a 30-point win, or thereabouts a uh, 30-point win in a WNBA Finals game. Then there's Game 3, which is now we're, we're in New York, uh, in the Barclays Center. Um, you know how hard the Bark get up. And this Liberty team looked completely different to the Game 1 and Game 2 Liberty team. Great adjustments by Sandy, um, putting Ionescu on Kia Stokes and uh, Brenna Stewart on Chelsea Gray. The, the theme of the adjustments did, though, seem to be one of Van der Sloot or Ionescu on Stokes and then, uh, yeah, then Stewie on Gray. So I think it was just like, put, it, put a little on Stokes um, and because she's just a, a non-factor offensively. And it was the first time the Liberty really laid a punch in this series. And they were so ready to land this punch. And I think they finally played their own game. They made the Aces look very mortal in this game. And which is, yeah, something I've, I'm not really used to seeing with the Las Vegas Aces over the past few seasons. Even, you know, even in losses, they seem to be playing their game the whole time. Um, so I think that, that those were some great signs, uh, for the Liberty and Stewie seemed to really thrive in this perimeter defensive assignment because that, that kind of led to her, she's a great defender. She's one of the best defenders in the world, not just inside on the wing, but she's also showed at the point of attack. Um, but I feel like having this assignment on a perimeter player led to her playing the game a bit more freely um, and which led to her uh, defending inside better than she had been in game one or two. And there was that great block she had against Asia Wilson when Asia took her to... She had her in the post, took her to the elbow, tried to take the jump shot over her, and Stewie just didn't even let it get out of her out of uh, Asia's hands. Um, and I think all of that all of that momentum for Stewie was set up by playing in the perimeter defensively in the first half. Another huge uh, note from this game was Chelsea Gray going out with four minutes 15 left and the Aces were down 69-61 at this point. The game kind of seemed one for the Liberty at this point. Uh, I don't think that Gray would have had an, uh, an impact on the outcome of the remainder of game three. And yeah, that was that, that ended up being a 14 point win for the Liberty uh, anyways. But I think, yeah, main takeaways for the Liberty was being able to be in control of the complexion of the game from start to finish. And um, a theme that's been key in the first three games of this series, or sorry, that was key in the first three games of this series, was who could do the work early. Because it seemed to be whoever did the work in usually the second and third quarters was the team that won the game. And it wasn't... It wasn't, it was simple stuff. It was like who got to loose balls, who put more uh, effort in defensively. It was, there's so much talent on the court and it's just, it was just nice to see like that the hustle and the energy and the effort, those things be rewarded when, yeah, when you have superstars going at each other on each side. Then you get the, the news between games three and four that Kia Stokes is going to be out. Uh, and so lining up in game four, you had two moon boots for one each for Kia Stokes and for Chelsea Gray. And that just seems like game five guaranteed, you know, here comes Liberty. Not that it'll be easy, but they, there won't be the same headaches that Kia Stokes, um, supports defensively. Uh, even Asia bringing her out when Asia was, um, awarded the Defensive Player of the Year. She didn't accept the award without Kia Stokes being there. And, I mean, obviously Chelsea Gray. Just, like, you don't, you can't really put 
the way she sets up her teammates into words, and it's just such a pleasure to watch. But game four, if you're listening to this, you know what the outcome is. 70-69 aces, and yet yeah, first game that went to clutch time in this series. Such, such a good game, despite there being stretches of awful basketball. Like, great D in the second quarter led to a really, really messy little stretch that saw Kayla George kind of just chucking up threes. Actually, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. Alicia Clark, who fans of this series are, you know, very, very aware of what she can do and how good she's been in defending, defending generally, and then also defending Brianna Stewart. And Kayla George got the start as well. Um, the Liberty got to a very comfortable lead early, but the Aces just looked more desperate all night, which seriously cannot happen when you're down 2-1 in the finals. Uh, I, you know, playing at home also probably should play into this as well, but I think just if you're down, if you lose this game, if losing this game means your, se- your season ends, you cannot be the team that looks less desperate on the court. At the end of the first half, uh, Stewie and JJ combined for three made field goals, and although Kayla George's uh, assignment was Benai Jelani for most of that first half, she still did a lot of work junking up the inside. Um, when she did get switched on to one of Stewie or JJ, she made them work. She made them work for rebounds. And, of course, this couldn't have been done without Asia Wilson as well. Crazy that Asia had two fouls in the first quarter as well. And and the Liberty were unable to, you know, maximize their lead um, with her with her going out of the game. Uh, but this was just like a, a masterpiece by Asia Wilson. This whole series was, but in this game especially, to come out so desperate, hustling, getting rebounds, defending like her life depended on it. Like she was playing as if she was fighting for a roster spot, whereas she kind of showed that she's the best player in the world right now. Um, and yeah, nine of the starters were known assets with Kayla being the only unknown and she looked like she belonged out there. She had some great dimes, and yeah, just bringing that competition to the inside was something you were going to need to bring if you're fulfilling or jumping into Kia Stokes' role, and she did it. Uh, she rushed a couple of threes for sure. I think I, my count was she, three of them were bad shots, and she lost her assignment maybe three, yeah, three times again, but I feel like that's probably going to happen to a starter in a basketball game. Um but yeah, it, it really it really looked like she was supposed to be there, which is, you know, as an Australian basketball fan, it's just awesome to see. And, you know, knowing the person that Kayla George is, uh, you, you just have to feel good that she had such a good, or that she had such good production in such a high-pressure situation. I mean, you know, getting, getting the call-up after just getting junk time in this series to being a starter in the... WNBA Finals, a game where you clinched the ring. That's that's awesome. Um, Courtney Vandersloot finally looked like herself in this game. Uh, I don't want to say it was to no avail because in games one to three, it it really just was not like it was not the same Vandersloot. I feel like fans were used to seeing in seasons past. I mean. She really has a f- she had full command of the court on some of her passes when she was playing with Chicago, and it didn't really feel like she had that in the first three games of this series. But you know, in today's game, she yeah she really had that, and she made I've written here relatively athletic plays. That's no slight on Vandersloot. She's you know had a pretty long career in the WNBA, and there are now more athletic players in the league. But I feel like those plays kind of came from finding a rhythm, trusting her own game, stuff like that, that, yeah, we didn't see in games one to three. She she looked like she wanted to take her threes, or, you know, any shots that she took, and she was really up and guarding Kelsey Plum, and even got that rip really late into the game, uh, which led to the possession that, um, led to a possession that got the Liberty down 70 to 69, after being 70 to 67 for the Liberty, uh, and, you know, kind of, and she, sorry, and she hit the three-pointer, the possession before, it was 70 to 65, and then she went on this, like, solo streak between 90 seconds and 50 seconds to go in the game, 
and really gave her team an opportunity to win this game. I think uh, John Quell Jones hates playing against Kayla George. She, she got a, a technical foul against her earlier in the season, and it really looked like um, JJ was completely taken out of her game, which I would say is in most part due to Asia's defending. Uh, I mean, Jones finished with eight field goal attempts and zero free throws for the game, which you just can't happen in like a do or die game. Uh, but I also feel like you know Kayla had Kayla had some some part in that as well. Um, Sabrina Ionescu chunded in the last quarter, which I thought was pretty awesome, and maybe maybe you know, maybe that's weird of me, but I thought I thought I thought that was pretty cool. Kind of added to the whole kind of story and drama of the game and of the series. But yeah, no Chelsea Gray, no Kia Stokes. The Liberty will be thinking about this for a while. Um, I, I expected the Aces to be to be champions, but not 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 with these th- circumstances. I have a few themes that I thought were key in this series on my handy dandy notebook here. D being the first one. Um, the next one is not just who could land the first punch, but understand why and how they landed it. And who could find a rhythm and bring a casualness and a relaxedness to their shot selection? So, D, I think, is always kind of a theme in uh, the playoffs. Who wins the playoff series in no matter what basketball league you're looking at in the world. If you can get your opponent out of their rhythm, then you can... uh, You know, the work that you do early kind of does, does its own work. That's that thing where, like... The pressure does its own work, um, and yeah, this was this was no exception. Uh, I would say there was less individually brilliant defend defending in this series, and it was definitely more two defensive units playing for each other. And I think that's something that both teams should be happy about. And yeah, it was it was it was very interesting to watch the defensive battle in this game. Not just who could land the first punch, but understand why they were landing it. I think maybe game one is the best example of this, where the Liberty had the scoreboard early, but I don't think they knew why. And as a series progr- I think the reason why was Marine Johannes coming in, um, and she kind of let the team get away from this rigid system, which I feel like is crucial when you have so much talent on your team. I feel like maybe Sandy was overcoaching, and there was... To, yeah, th- there was t- there was way too much system at, at at certain parts of this series, and I think this is maybe the thing that Steve Kerr does best with the Golden State Warriors that people, you know, people hate giving him credit for anything, but I think the thing that he does well, uh, and kind of what he does so much better than Mark Jackson did, and probably what led to Mark Jackson being fired and Steve Kerr being hired, is that he just lets them play sometimes. He lets his players play sometimes, and that is like crucial, especially when you're not really getting anything going. You need to just let basketball be what it is for someone like Brianna Stewart or John Quell Jones or Sabrina Ionescu. And the fact that that player was Maureen Johannes showed how much basketball the Liberty missed out on and how much rhythm and flow they didn't get into. So yeah, I think that playing with that freedom is... Um, crucial and that was yeah kind of the th- the third point as well when there is so much talent on the floor and uh the game is going to be complex and it's going to have a, have a lot of nuance so it's really important to keep it simple if you can and i think that was what happened when the liberty r- were rolling in game three when the liberty were rolling in the second quarter in game two and when the aces were rolling in games one and two um in games one and two, they didn't really get into their stuff in game three, which I think is also a good sign for the Liberty, for such a good, like a great basketball team to get taken out of their flow. They don't do that on their own, and you got to give the Liberty the most amount of credit for that. Um, Becky Hammond definitely outcoached Sandy Brondello. Even with Becky having six players she favoured with minutes, uh, Kayla came in with confidence, and she shot the ball 14 times, uh, three of 10 from three. But 
yeah, it just feels it feels like Kayla was not only stayed ready, so credit to her, but uh, that Becky and the rest of the team kind of wanted her to shoot those shots. And even if it's hyper inefficient, even if that that uh, guy on Twitter, who oh sorry X, who called me out for praising Kayla George, didn't like how much she was chucking, they did they don't win this game without her. And I've touched on this with Sandy, but I feel like uh, she coached Marine out of this series. And I don't think she will be the head coach of the New York Liberty um, for their next game. Stewie's D was vital in keeping the Liberty alive in games three and four. But over the series, she shot 25 of 69, which was good for 36% over the course of the series. She also shot 3 of 17 in that closeout game just before, which, man, I just, like, it just can't happen. Like, if you're, if you're the MVP and a deserving MVP, uh, you can't let that happen. You're at home, you're in front of, you're in front of your fans. 3 of 17, like, you can only be defended so well before you're, you have to realize you are one of the best players in the world. Um, and I'm sure Stewie would be thinking that she is the best player in the we- in the world. You don't really get to that stature in world basketball without thinking you are the best. Um, so that is that was a huge uh, mountain that the Liberty had to face. That I think was in large part due to Sandy, but I think ultimately was up to Stewie to be more efficient, make uh, get herself to the free throw line more, and also just take some smarter shots. She kind of fell in love with contested mid-ranges and contested post looks because, <clears throat> well, she's really good at hitting them, but also I think she's very used to getting to the free throw line from them, and I don't think that was really flying in the finals. So, yeah, she didn't really have a counter for that or a next option. Um, yeah, and... Uh, no, no, I was going to say credit the Aces defensively, but I feel like the defensive effort the Aces did on Stewie was before she got the ball, and like not in these situations specifically when she was um, uh, backing down someone that was shorter than her. John Quill Jones had a great series scoring the ball, uh, picked a really good time to start finding her stride and her rhythm. Uh, she had a couple of... Sorry, she had that one five block game I'm pretty sure it was and I feel like you could you can see watching this series how much the D comes after the O for John Quell which is which kind of sounds like a criticism but uh yeah the the the, the whole the whole aura and the essence of her game was uh dictated on the offensive end but then you can't uh shoot the ball eight times in an elimination elimination game if you've been one of the more consistent scorers for your team in the in the finals eight attempts and zero free throws is crazy that's you know you you seriously cannot do that sabrina might be a bit one-dimensional but that dimension genuinely gets the liberty wins like she will win an entire game when she had three point shots falling but she needs to either find a way to guarantee an efficient three-point shooting night or add to her game. And I think the most glaring hole in her game is defensively. Um, in multiple series, uh, the Liberty's opponents were happy to just go at Sabrina. And it was pretty much a good shot every single time. So, yeah, I think her game has a few years um, from being a superstar. I think she isn't a superstar yet, and I think that she showed in this series why she isn't a superstar yet, but, you know, that's not really... She's still young, you know? Like, she, 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 she's been in this situation now. She's hit threes in incredibly, um, like, high... Uh, in incredibly high-pressure moments. Um, but I think that, yeah, that, that there needs to be a few more wrinkles in, into her, in, added to her game. Benaja Laney, I feel like, had a good uh, series. She was probably the Liberty's most consistent performer, games one through four. I feel like she didn't really have a bad game. And she really competed defensively. Um, And she just did her job. I think this 
yeah, I think she did all she could, and this loss, this series loss, isn't on her. Uh, CVDS Sloot may be over it, or she's just a solid point guard at this juncture of her career, um, and maybe she's not on the same plane as the rest of the talent in this series. That's kind of kind of bound to happen when you've been in the league for as long as her. At at some point, you kind of start going the other way. And then on the Aces side, Jackie Young, <clears throat> unbelievable. She's, I feel like she's kind of always been the fourth of the core four for the Las Vegas Aces, but she was so reliable offensively, defensively, and as a competitor uh, throughout the entire series. There were a few plays in game four just then where she was like getting steals on John Quell Jones in the post and like just making JJ work way too much for if JJ were to be uh, matched up against a six foot guard in the post. Um, so I think great series for Jackie Young and she was just that steady force that you you just you need to have a few of those players in the playoffs and in the finals and she she was that player. Kelsey Plum's role with this team is way different to when she won six player of the year in 2021. You know, that obviously happens when you become a starter. But she's just a hound defensively, and she makes super threatening plays uh, offensively. Her body positioning and body control on her drives are second to none. Like, I, I, I don't, I can't picture another player in the world that can walk their opponents big to the ring. And the only thing keeping their opponent from getting the block is taking that like slow one two step getting right to your position and being able to burst when you go for the layup after um yeah after after winning that position on the inside being able to burst so that the big can't get to it i mean she, like she shouldn't have had so much of an advantage inside yet she did and it was all due to her all due to her um chelsea gray's passing is otherworldly she creates so many easy baskets for uh, for her team and never gets taken out of her game. Um, yeah, I feel like Chelsea Gray's game really speaks for itself and she's so good at basketball. Her, her, that, that mid-range that she never seemed to miss started missing in this series and, uh, well, f first of all, I didn't believe that could actually happen. But also... Uh, even though her shot wasn't falling, which is like far out, I, don't, I, don't, I hate to be like this, but it's kind of half of her offensive game. It's like passing and that mid range. She was still so effective offensively. Um, but yeah, she never gets taken out of her game. And speaking of never getting taken out of your game, Asia Wilson. Uh, every single possession, she found a way to be the best player on the court at something, whether it was defensively, hustling, getting the rebound. Um, she, she put in more effort and energy and had more desperation than every other player on the court. And I think when you're a player that's as good as Asia at basketball, when you do that other stuff, the, the, you know, the intangibles, the one percenters, um, I think that, 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 uh, bleeds through the rest of the team and she's just a model of leadership and she's such a good basketball player. And we have like probably I would say at least 10 more years of her. So th thanks for everything you've done, Asia. As, as a fan, it's really fun to watch the Aces play and you're one of the biggest reasons for that. And I'm going to continue watching you um, the rest of your career. Uh, and then, yeah, offensively, she has a bag that allows her to get a layup free throws or get to that mid-ranger, which I feel like she didn't miss once in this series. And it just swished so smoothly every single time. Uh, so, so yeah, she was the finals MVP. She was such such a deserving winner of finals MVP. Defensive player of the year and WNBA champion. The only thing that was missing was the MVP. And she made the MVP look like light work on the biggest stage. Um, that was a really cool WNBA playoffs from start to finish. I feel like... I feel like... All eight teams can not sorry, no, not can only get better, but should only be getting better next season. Uh, and I mean, 
It's a great time to be a basketball fan. And the WNBA playoffs showed why. Again, it's a great time to be a basketball fan. So I think I might do another episode soon with Marco. Uh, yeah, getting into like, you know, analyzing the series a bit more. But I feel like this was, I wanted to get like a few words out, just recapping the last four games that were. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm keen to listen back on this. I feel like I'm going to hate listening back on this, but you know, I, I can also probably just stop talking at this point, which I will. See ya.